Now it's that glorious month of the year, and I'm not saying October is not a glorious month, but when it comes to preparation, deer hunting chores, and really getting excited and built up for the season, that's September. You know, back in the day, I, I shot Broadhead Leagues, the Oakland County Sportsman's Club. They used to have, I think, four different leagues, five different leagues right around there, including a Wednesday morning maybe league. But uh, you shot Broadheads through cardboard silhouettes into a sand trap. You ended about the last week of September, and the season opened on October 1st. So we played a lot of Euchre uh, after the after the league. Uh, I remember they had hot dogs. I remember shooting out in the pouring rain, but a lot of really good memories as a teenager and early 20s shooting that. Um, and, and we they'd have 44-man teams some, sometimes, uh, some years, on each one of those uh, nights or mornings. So uh, pretty big, uh, huge group of archers. When you got that many archers and bow hunters together, um, in preparation for the season, it was pretty dang exciting. I can remember, you remember some of those cold rains late September where some leaves are getting knocked down. It just felt like you should be in the woods. And we're getting close to that time now. It's almost 100 degrees today, so we're shooting inside. Uh, we shot one outside, and that was enough. Uh, but uh, it doesn't feel like fall yet, but we're getting, I noticed later in the week, uh, low 50s to mid 50s for morning lows, so uh, we'll take it. Early September stands. Yes, tree stands in early September. Seems late, doesn't it? You know, a lot of our stands, a lot of setups have been around for a while, but we have a lot of locations where we can throw a ladder stand into a tree. We don't have many shooting lanes to cut. We won't be hunting some of those stands until middle of October and later for pre-rut and rut, gun season later. So. We're setting up stands and we might not even be going back to that spot in this location now for weeks if not months at a time that's that setup we're not looking for stand locations where we're just hacking down the woods we need to make drastic shooting uh, lanes and lots of cuttings and big holes in the trees to get the stands up and lots of limbs to take down we're doing those last minute setups last year we had a last minute setup in uh about 11 foot high uh, stand location for a hang on on the apple plot where we cut down quite a bit of cedar threw a hang on in there one of the family traditions and uh and then later on late october i sat there and i think dylan and i you and i sat there at some point maybe mid-october i would say right. yeah and then it was about a week and a half after that 10 days later i shot bow out of that a nice six-year-old so that was a last minute stand set up we didn't have to cut shooting lanes there just had to get some holes to shoot out of the tree and it all worked out. And part of that's matching the stand to the cover that's available. We're not putting a stand up super high in some of these because we already have the cover. We've looked at these stand locations. Like we can set this up and get away with it. That's what you're kind of looking at. So that's uh, one of the first things on our priority right now, early in the, uh, September. Liquid fertilizer. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Really, I, I really kind of this time of year, like I said, I'm getting excited for hunting. It's not that I don't want to take care of my food plots, but I get more excited, for example, number six down here waiting on the shift. What I mean by that is September, especially early September, late August, is a pivot point. Your land will get better, where even hunting on public land will become more attractive or it'll get worse. Typically, it's not the same August, September, October, November, December, all the way through. Your land's either getting better or worse. It gets better because you have, or you're hunting, public land, private land, you're either hunting fall cover, you're hunting fall food, winter cover, winter food, you're controlling your hunting pressure, or you're finding places on public land that lack hunting pressure. And therefore, the areas you hunt because of food, cover, and lack of pressure start heating up. Typically, if you have a lot of summer food, that summer food's gone. That summer cover that bucks need is gone. They need open cover. They don't need thick cover during the summertime. They can't crash your velvet through it. So we're really waiting for that shift to happen. Now we have some local bucks that are around quite a bit. Ocho's one. LL Beams, we've gotten now about seven, eight videos of them and pictures. We've never had pictures before during Hardhorn, so it's pretty cool to get them during velvet in August. And it seems like his fre the frequency he's coming on the land is more and more. So we'd love to see that. I'd uh, love to see him coming back, but he's one of those who wait to shift. He shifts in October, November, December, January. He's there for the entire time. We're waiting for Newbie to come back in October as another one. 
Um, really start to look for those that white tail shift to take place, especially with a box. Does, fawns, or homebodies, even small bucks, but you really start to suck in some of those older bucks that prefer the fall and winter habitat as opposed to the summer habitat they've been in the entire time. And that's why your property typically gets better or worse this time of year. It's a pivot point. That's why you never take a census in August or September because that's during the pivot point. It's not reflective of year to year unless you're hunting in a fence, fenced in area. So liquid fertilizer. I'm excited about this because liquid and spraying fertilizer on crops is to me way better than putting hundreds of pounds through a spreader, whether it's on our tractor or a bag spreader and spreading it out in the fields. So we're using deer grow liquid fertilizer. We've used it twice now for a clover. 31818, 18. awesome because we're putting a jug per acre and two and a half gallon jug per acre. We're using about 11 gallons, 12 gallons per. So on a 45 gallon tank, we can spray roughly four acres. It's four two and a half gallon jugs. And we just go out there and spray. Very, very efficient. And what's cool about liquid is it absorbs right into the plant, right into the foliage. So when that liquid fertilizer goes in and hits the plant, it absorbs 90, at least 90% of the fertilizer is absorbed, even if there's no rain. So where granular fertilizer, you need it to rain, you need it to work into the soil. If you don't get enough for uh, nitrogen, enough moisture, it'll volatize into the air. You don't get any use out of it then, or it's cut significantly over a two week period with high temperatures. So this liquid, we're going out to spray this week. We don't even know for getting rain. It's just the foil just coming up. We have all our little brassica plants and all our fall greens coming up this time of year, clover even. So we're spraying that, getting fertilizer on it, and, um, and that'll be really nice. I'm very excited to use that for all our crops this year uh, for the convenience factor and the fact that it absorbs about 90% absorbs about of the fertilizer with liquid as opposed to only about 30% with granular for that growing season. Number three. All water holes are full. We use 300 gallon tanks. Why do we use 300 gallon tanks? Because we fill them in early to mid September and leave them for the rest of the year. They're good until they freeze. Think about it. 100, we found that with moderate use, white tails will go through about 100 gallons in a, in a month. So if you have a 300 gallon tank, you get a little bit of rain. Our tanks are set below the surface of the ground. You get pool, pooling of water. You capture runoff then with just a little bit of rain we find that they rarely go under 150 gallons or half that tank 100 gallons so that being said those deer never stop that pattern of use and that's really important because if you have a smaller tank it runs out for a week you go put water in it the deer stopped using it because it's not a part of their daily pattern anymore and it takes two or three weeks to get them into that pattern again so you never want to run out 100 gallon tanks we use those for many years they work for pretty well I'd, I'd go two years sometimes without having to put water in them and then i'd go two years where i'd put water five times sometimes three times in a season because they run out or they're about to run out think about a 100 gallon tank in a month it's 24 inches down 22 inches 25 inches down to the bottom it's out we use the size tanks we do. We don't want a really big wide top. Even our 300 gallons are 63 by 69 inches and hold 300 gallons. That means they're 25 inches deep and there's not a lot of surface then for evaporation. I don't want a 10 foot wide water hole, for example, even if it was man-made and it had man-made material because that same amount of gallons, it's not very deep. There's a large surface area to gallon ratio and you lose water. Again, you can't afford to run out. It's deceiving because some years you say, oh, I had plenty of water. Then you can go three years where you don't. So fill them now and we're good for the season. Last seeding of rye. This is important because our fall power greens, for example, we specifically instruct the purchaser of that product, purchaser of that product to broadcast 150 pounds of winter rye approximately four weeks after germination um, so if it germinated, you plant it early August along with your brassica off to the side. Then if it starts germinating in the middle of August, then about mid-September, you're putting 150 pounds of rye right over the top of it because that's a candy crop. It's an early to mid-season crop. So we expect those greens to be hit, hit down. We leave space in there so you can throw the rye, and then that makes it green all the way till spring. It helps you fight weeds on that half of the property too going into the spring. So the rye is a great cover-up and actually a filler necessary layer for the fall power greens and then any food plot mistake 
And I used to layer rye. I'd plant 100 pounds, 100 pounds, 100 pounds. If the food plots of failure, brassicas are all eaten down, didn't grow due to drought, whatever the case, throw a bunch of rye in and enjoy the season. Why rye instead of wheat? Rye is very, very soil tolerant, pH tolerant, cold temperature tolerant. It'll grow in the worst of pHs, the worst of soil during the coldest temperatures compared to anything else. That's a Michigan State University study comparing lots of different grains. So rye is our plant layer in mid-September and we can't wait to get to that point because when we get there, we don't have a lot left to do on the property. And around that time, you know, two weeks to four weeks before the season, we really start throwing our broadheads into the mix. Now we've been shooting field points, field points, field points. We know our broadheads hit the same. We use the Muzzy Trocar HBs. We've been really happy with those. I've gone back to those. Use them for a year, few years, come back. It's been my favorite broadhead so far because I like the wider cut and then I like the cut and impact point where it can make a nice small hole. We get good pass-throughs for those, but you have the bigger bleeder blades. It's a nice uh, compromise between like a larger mechanical head and a smaller fixed blade head. So we really like those. The bottom line is to start throwing them into the mix. So we'll have a couple broadheads. We'll have eight, ar eight arrows without broadheads. You shoot, mix in a couple of those, shoot them off to the side of the broadhead target. We have one of the little dice targets from uh, a couple of them from uh, Morel. And love those. You can throw them in the back of the pickup easily, but we'll shoot a couple over there and the rest of them over here. And then you can compare where they're hitting very easily because it's just part of your shooting routine. And now's the time to start doing that. I don't think you need to do that three months ago, four months ago. If your arrows are tuned well, they're hitting well, they paper tune well, and you're keeping really good groups at a long distance, then your broadhead shouldn't affect that unless it's a poorly designed broadhead or you're shooting too big of a broadhead, you're shooting a broadhead with too wide of a uh, blades, fixed blades. It's a lot easier than that, folks. Um, you, it really is. I don't advocate shooting these little heads or mechanicals the day before you go hunting, but getting out two or three weeks and getting about 10 practice sessions where you start working them in is a great tactic that I've used for 30 years. Trail cameras, we'll skip down, down to seven. Trail cameras, this is a great time to make sure we have lots of batteries sitting over there. We have lithium battery packs. We have uh, several hundred uh, AA lithiums right over there that will get out into our cameras. And when we set those in September, we're not setting them on food sources. We're getting 200 pictures a day. I do not want that at all. I don't want to wade through 200 pictures anyways. I don't have the time. So I want them on a mock scrape. I want them on the edge of a food source for deer coming in and out. I want them on a travel cord or a water hole. I want them in front of stands most of the time because I want to see the deer that are in our hunting areas. And we're making sure that all our batteries are full, they're set to go, and then we're leaving them. And a lot of those we're not touching until November, December, even the high active use ones, because they last that long, the batteries last that long, they're very reliable. So that's why we trust the reveals. And you can imagine we'll have an arsenal going out um, this year and we can't wait to get to that point either because then we're getting there it's just hunting so i hope you're closing into it's just hunting because that's what we're doing that's why these september deer chores are so important and something we look to look forward to so much because the beginning of the season will be upon you sometimes by the time you see this video on september 1st but for a lot of other, we have ours middle of September, still a lot more people October 1st, and a little bit later than that, but man, it's here. Enjoy these last set of chores uh, for the year. And I'm able to come out with some October deer chores, but there's not much at that time of year because it's all hunting all the time. And I hope you're ready to enjoy all hunting all the time right now. You know, what a year it's been. I really appreciate all of your support. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to point out, we still have our Earthway spreaders. We're always going to have those uh, for sale on Pure Wildlife Blends, WHS. Great Christmas presents. Um, again, we're scheduling for clients right now. It seems early, but the season goes by early. Typically, between the four or five of us who go to uh, properties, uh, five, including Wes, and then uh, Joe, Kevin, Dylan, myself, Typically by the end of December, we're all booked up. I have about 300 properties across the country. So now is the time to book. Check out info at whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. Jesse will help you book your time. Also our web classes. This is a really big time where people are starting to purchase those web classes to help them with hills and thermals, hunting the rut, 
and then especially towards the end of December, we're getting into our how to design your whitetail property, a great alternative to actually having one of us out to the property. Boots on the ground are always better. Check out digital land management, which is something new we're working on. We'll continue to work on that. And, uh, and then of course, we really appreciate all your support. We have more hats, more t-shirts on the site. Uh, the books are always there and want to thank you. Thanks for checking us out and uh, appreciate you.